Hey everybody, so I've just come back off taking roughly a month off from making content, spending time with the family and just getting grips to life being a new dad. Now as I've got back to playing BDO, the mobile version of the game has also soft launched. So for those of you that aren't aware, mobile version of Black Desert soft launched on the 24th of October in a select few countries. So these countries were Ireland, Sweden, Turkey, Malaysia, Australia, Canada and Chile. And amongst this, the game is also currently only available on Android. So the iOS version of the game will be coming with the global launch, and there still isn't a date for that, but that will be launching alongside the rest of the countries um, for the Western release. Now, you can download the APAC for the game if you want to play it now, and you can use a VPN that will allow you to change your country of origin on your phone basically temporarily while you're playing to one of those countries mentioned and that will allow you to get access to the game. Now it is worth noting that as far as we're aware people that do this won't have a huge advantage over those that are new to the game. Once the global launch happens there will be new servers opened and these servers won't be accessible for people that were uh, playing during the soft launch so they won't be able to get a head start on anybody else. As for the requirements of the game, the minimum requirements are set around the level of the Galaxy S5 and the recommended settings to run the game smoothly and on the higher settings are around the level of a Galaxy S9. So it's definitely worth having a look at the comparisons with your phone and where it stands in terms of the processing power and the graphics available. Now I'm not going to go into huge detail in the game and everything that there is available, I just wanted to touch on my first impressions and have a look at the game from the start. So to begin with, we do only have access to four, um, five sorry, initial classes, the Warrior, the Ranger, Witch, Giant or the Zerker, and also Valkyrie. So the other classes will be coming later on with the game, however similar to when this game launched over in Korea, there was limitations in terms of the classes and also the zones in the game. So currently there is only Balanos, Serendia and Calfian, with the Medaya and Valencia regions coming later on. And also the classes, at least to my knowledge, currently don't have their awakenings, but they are also something that will come later on in the game. Now the first thing that stood out for me when I was looking at this game, when I downloaded it and started to play, was the fact that in true BDO fashion, the character customization has remained intact. The customization is hands down one of the best I've ever seen in any MMO. Even on a mobile, it still stands head and toes above most of the other games. I didn't spend a lot of time playing with this because I'm really not somebody that finds too much of an interest in it. However, as you can see just from what you're looking at on screen, the length that they've gone to for all the different customization options included things like the size or the dimensions of your eyes, your lips, nose, the height of your character, the multiple different layers of colouring for hair, Everything is intact, similar to the actual console or the PC versions of BDO. Now, it wouldn't be a mobile game if it didn't have a cash shop, so I wanted to have a look through this and flick through to see just what kind of level BDO had brought the cash shop to mobile. Now, you won't be surprised if you've played on any of the other platforms to see that pets are a big thing in this game and pets will loot for you. There are also costumes. Now, unfortunately, unlike the PC and the console versions of the game, these costumes do come with hidden stats or not hidden. They're very visible, but they do have additional stats. This means that you are going to want costumes in this game and it is something that you're going to want to get and it can be purchased through the cash shop. However, what you can also see on the screen is there is a marketplace price for this. This means that it's very likely that things that you can buy in the Pearl Shop are going to appear on the marketplace. They don't currently have that many showing up on the soft launch, but that's predominantly because people aren't really throwing that much money into this. There is also the option to exchange pearls for the in-game version of pearls, so there is also a pearl currency that you can earn through the game. And as with any other kind of um, MMO that you see on mobiles, there are various different bundles, different packs that you can get, and different ways that you can essentially spend money to make your life a little bit easier in the game or to progress faster than other people. This will be considered pay to win and it undeniably is, however if you're somebody that can restrain yourself and isn't really bothered about spending on a game and can appreciate the multiple layers that this game brings to the table, it might not be a turn off for you or at least not as much as it may seem to start with. Now there are these cheaper combat packs as well, so the combat plus and the combat, um, the camp plus and also the black spirit plus which is a completely different feature that I'd touch on in another video. But these packs are reasonably priced, they do give you added benefits and act sort of like a pseudo subscription, very similar to what you see on the 
other platforms with Black Desert with the value pack. But then you've also got things like your silver and your black stones that um, you can consistently get day in and day out by spending a little bit of money on the smaller subscriptions. Be careful though because these things do add up very quickly and before you know it you will be spending more money than you originally intended to. And if you're like me and you're somebody that doesn't mind spending money on games and quite enjoys the fact that you can invest some of your hard earned cash into keeping up with the player base then this is definitely one of the avenues that you can make the best for your money. Now it is worth noting as well that the pets don't play such a huge part in this game as they do on the other platforms. Yes they do loot for you, however the trash loot that drops from mobs automatically gets picked up anyway and the only things that the pets pick up are the rarer items and you can pick them up manually yourself if you want to. The pets do however come with skills and these skills can be leveled up. So they are going to play a big part in the game and having three pets is undeniably going to help you out in future. Just like Black Desert on the other platforms, there are consistent events as well. So currently there are the soft launch events, a Black Spirit event and a couple of other things that give you various items on a daily basis and encourage you to log into the game and complete various tasks. This is something that everybody will be familiar with if you've played any kind of mobile game. There is always a reward to keep you coming back to the game and continuously logging in. Now the thing about Black Desert on the mobile though is that it has a great AFK feature. It actually has multiple AFK features. Again, I don't want to go into them too much in detail as I'm just doing a quick overview for the game at the moment, but they are fantastic and in my eyes are definitely hands down the best AFK features that I've seen in any kind of mobile MMO. Now if you haven't done already, you can still pre-register for the game if it hasn't launched in your region. And this will give you a whole host of benefits, one of which is an outfit to begin with and you're also going to get some other benefits for signing up. There were milestones that the developers had put in place and for each one of these milestones we've been given some free items. Definitely worth pre-registering if you're thinking about playing on the global release and if you have already got the game, uh, if you are in one of the soft launch regions and you had previously signed up, you'll already have benefited from these items anyway. Now the game as a whole to me feels really well rounded. I think they've done a great job when it comes to putting together the UI, it's really easy to navigate and I haven't had any difficulties in understanding anything that's been going on in the game. Coming from a background in BDO as well, I was really or it was really refreshing sorry, to see that a lot of the systems are still in place. The enhancing system fortunately has been redone though, so it is different to PC. The skill sequencing as well, you are limited to the skills you have but you level up your skills by picking up books throughout your grinding. These books give you experience towards these skills and each one of your skills has its own individual book. Now there's no real depth to the skill level ups. They are pretty linear. You do just grab four skills on your main bar and then four skills on your second bar. And to switch to these, you just swipe across your action buttons in the bottom right. And this allows you to change from one set of skills to the other. It's a really smooth and really fluid way of doing it. And I haven't found that the combat is clunky by any means. Overall the combo system, the fact that the combo or the combat flows and is very fluid like it is on the other versions of the game is quite good to see. I'm really happy with the way that the game plays out. Now there is an auto feature that allows you to essentially set your character up to automatically grind mobs and there are various ways you can do this AFK. There is also a tray option that allows you to minimize the game into a low power mode and also a way that you can completely turn the game off and still AFK grind or AFK gather, even AFK fish for up to three hours without paying where you can essentially just completely close the game down and it will go about its business. You can log into your items and also to the experience that you've gained. Now it is worth noting you can pay to increase this to six hours but that is as far as it will go. You can leave, as I said, the game in a low power mode. This will allow you to check back regularly to either finish repeatable quests or to check where you're up to, use some extra buffs or anything like that if you want to. Um, but it is good to see that there are three different versions of the AFK function and they are there to fit and work with people who prefer to do different things or who have more time or more ability to monitor their phone. But overall I think the takeaway message for me was the fact that I don't have to leave my phone turned on with the game active to be able to benefit from AFK grinding. Now this auto feature does get turned off when you're doing any sort of new content. For example what you've been watching on the screen is the fight leading up to Red Nose and during this for the level that I've previously not done I have to manually do this. 
Once I've done this, I can go back and redo this with an auto feature enabled. However, it is good to see that the automatic feature isn't just a way for you to play this game without ever actually playing it. I'm really happy that this feature was put in the game in the way that it has been. This allows you to benefit from the automatic feature when you want to AFK to do some things, but it doesn't detract from the combat that they've done so well in the game. It means that people are going to have to play this game through its entirety, you're going to have to learn the combat, you're going to have to learn the combos to really benefit from getting through the higher tiers of the stages. Now these stages do get progressively harder and although they start off relatively simple and easy to clear, they do get a lot more difficult. And as your gear improves, you will find that the fights get a lot more enjoyable. To start with though, I can't say that I have any issues with any of the fights that I've come into. I really enjoyed that the boss mechanics are similar to how they are on console. The animations look fantastic, their attack sequences are exactly how you'd expect them to be on any of the other platforms. And the fact that you can legitimately die to these if you're not prepared and you're not paying attention is really good to see. And a lot of the other systems transfer across to the game just as equally well. There are some other things to note that I will be going over in other videos. They are things like the way that workers are done in this game. You actually have your own camp and this allows you to set up various buildings, send your workers out to gather materials for you and use those materials to further develop your camp. There's no massive worker empire like there was on the other versions of the game, which is a little bit unfortunate, but I can understand why they did it. There isn't a massive persistent world. It is broken down into various small instances. So instances like this event or the various regions. So for example, you don't have a massive open world around Velia. Instead you have, um, I think it's Bartoli Farm that is made into its own region that bridges between um, Velia and Heidel along with a couple of others like Forest of Seclusion that you can roam around. But it is basically broken down into smaller little instant zones and those instant zones though, there are other people. So they are persistent where other people on the server, you will run into them. You will be able to PVP once you hit level 40 and can flag as a bandit essentially. Um, so although there isn't the massive scale of the open world, it does feel very vast. There are a lot of zones. There are definitely a lot of people around. Even during the soft launch, I haven't had any sort of real time where I've not ran into other people. So it definitely feels grand, it feels like a big game, and it feels really enjoyable. Now I don't want this video to drag on any longer than it already has, I just wanted to give a brief overview of some of the main things, my take home messages from the game, and what I feel after my first 24 hours of playing it. Overall, I'm a really big fan of video on mobile, I think it transfers across incredibly well, the graphics are fantastic, and just looking at this event sequence leading up to this boss fight is absolutely amazing. I haven't come across a mobile game that I feel is really sort of free to play friendly, but BDO I feel may have nailed it with the cash shop. I am waiting to see how this plays out when more things are put on the marketplace and also with a little bit more playtime to fully understand just how much the cash shop plays into this game. But at the moment, I'm enjoying the game for what it is. I'm having a real blast playing it. And I'm hopefully going to continue to do so moving forwards. I will be starting completely over again once the soft launch um, period has ended. We go into global launch and I can play it without a VPN. I will be playing on my server with people from Exile as well. A lot of people in the guild are going to be joining me on the game. And we're just going to be having a laugh together. Now over the next week or so, I am going to be getting back to making my content for the PS4 and Xbox versions of Black Desert, along with a ton of videos on the mobile. I'm going to go into the each individual systems on a video uh, of its own, I feel, especially things like the enhancement system, which I feel is done incredibly well on the mobile version, unlike the other platforms. Um, I do want to cover each and every one of these off as I can in their own individual videos, because I feel that they merit those videos. If you are new to the channel, as always guys, hit that subscribe button and thanks for everybody that's shown the support so far. I promise that I am back to it now. There will be a whole bunch of new content coming. I have a lot of footage from PS4 that I can't wait to get out in videos. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.